to Friday. Um, it was great to see the majority of you yesterday, and if not, then welcome to today's as well. Uh, we're in this. We're today. We have uh, the guest artist is Allison Pinto. Allison is from India. Allison's a, a wonderful artist. Uh, didn't get to be in India this year. Looking forward to seeing her in India next year. So, Allison, we used your colors yesterday, and uh, really interesting in how and what you're going to show us today. So, with that, Allison, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm very honored and quite humbled to be here, actually, John. And I want to thank you for making such phenomenal paints. I remember the first time I ordered a few tubes from the US because we couldn't get it here. And uh, I remember how I felt when I opened them up. It was when I used them, it was like, like the holy grail for me. Seven years down the line, I still get that feeling when I open a tube. It's, oh. it's feeling. So yes, it, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate uh, as a community for all the watercolor artists out there. Your sessions are amazingly informative. And uh, I mean, any session we watch with you, we get so many, in, so much of information about the pigments, which is fascinating. So thank you for that. Oh, you're so welcome. I, the, the, um, the input, the viewers, and also the guest artists, um, and Anna and Gabriel and Giovanni and Johnny. I, I love that. I love the camaraderie and the energy that art brings to everybody. It's, it's really wonderful. So very good. Um, so we're going to see a slight um, yeah. slideshow from you as, mm -hmm. as it, to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then um, Allison has, has asked for the first 10 minutes while she's getting warmed up in her painting that we just hold off questions for the 10 minutes. And then after the 10 minutes, um, just if you're on Zoom, go ahead and ask. And if you're on Facebook, I'll look, Anna will look, Gabriel will look, um, and we'll relay those questions to Allison. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start the, the share screen. So Ethel, do you have a slideshow? Yeah, we're going to start now. Okay, so we want to make sure that um, our friends here would follow Allison um, and her socials via the Instagram. This is Allison's Instagram account. It's Allison Pinto Art. And we have, of course, Allison in Facebook as well. And she also has a YouTube account. Um, as you can see here, she's uh, uploaded an extensive, I've watched this video anyway, um, there's a demo and a demo on watercolor sticks. The next couple of slides will be sample artworks of Allison. So Allison, if you could just share briefly about each of the artwork. Yes, sure. So uh, this one, uh, I, I essentially work from my own photographs. Uh, photography has kind of opened up uh, a different view for me and I see things differently and I try to portray them in a way that um, has, I, I am relatively a realistic artist. And at the same time, I uh, want some, some of my expression in that particular piece. So the thing that I'm photographing, I've got to connect with it. I've got to resonate with it. And that's what photography does for me. I have to see the subjects in person. Some of them I paint live. So this is a photograph uh, I think I've taken from, um, you know, we don't have in where I'm living in Bombay, we don't have a lot of uh, places where we get fresh flowers growing and stuff like that. So whenever I'm traveling, the first thing I'm looking out for is where can I find lovely natural subjects, you know, flowers, leaves, bark, all of that. And uh, the first place I go to is usually a botanical garden and, and try to take as many pictures as I can. And uh, so I've taken this at, uh, I've gone to the Delhi, uh, there's a botanical Afro-American friendship garden. And I've taken pictures there. I've taken like a thousand pictures. And out of those, a few of them make the cut. They have this, the elements that I want to see in a painting. And then I portray it here. And in this particular painting, this is one of my most favorite paintings. I must have used... I think about 15, 16, 20 colors. But the idea was to use all the colors and have them very cohesively together. So I hope I've achieved that. 
This is another subject from the Indo-African Rose Garden. And uh, what I liked about it was the way the light was touching it. It was magical. And that little uh, uh, dust catching onto the cobweb below it, it uh, I, I just loved how it looked. So I've actually deliberately dulled down everything else around it to, to bring out the light in it. In fact, John, the previous rose you have seen when you came to Bombay, when we met and you liked it a lot. I'm not sure if you remember. I still I, like it, it's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, that's colorful. Yeah. <laughs> yes, this, uh, working with red and photographing red also isn't always easy. Uh, in this, there are about seven or eight different reds that I've used. And uh, the idea being to create a lot of depth and layers. And I've just stuck to the reds and added, I think on the side, that must be cascade green, it looks like to me. Yeah. I use colors all the time and I love to play with a lot of colors. So typically I will, I will show you my process before I start painting and I make a reference of each painting that I do. And uh, I, I don't have one right here on me right now, but for today's I've made a reference of colors. So I, I use this reference and uh, I, will, I will get into it more in, later when we start painting. This is a person I met on Instagram and I loved her eyes. And uh, I took special permission from her to paint uh, this and uh, added my own, uh, you know, story around her, the blue and all that was my own creativity. But I, this, that's what I like to do. I like to take my subject and then add something to it uh, where it, it expresses my emotion towards the piece. Well, uh, for Easter, my daughter wanted a little bunny. My daughter's here. This is my daughter, Lisa. And uh, so, uh, in, of course, I couldn't get her a bunny. So this was the next best thing. <laughs> and it just gets her out a little bunny. The sea, the sea is something that resonates with me tremendously. And this one just happened very spontaneously on a day when I was not planning to paint and I wasn't feeling so great. It just happened and uh, I, I particularly enjoyed this piece. Again, hints of water and stuff like that really uh, appeal to me. Um, I love birds, particularly egrets and uh, I, this is one of my favorite paintings too. It's a little piece and it, I really like this one. So I'm a fan of Turner's a lot. And uh, I also, after using Daniels with granulating colors, I love making abstracts. I don't share them very much because it's more of a self-exploratory thing. So this one, uh, I particularly like the colors and I've shared this one. Those are beautiful. Thank you. What was the, uh, what was the blue on the, the lady? What was the, the blue? Which color did you use for the blue? Uh, that was a tallow blue green shade. So I've used a couple. I've mixed tallow blue green shade and I've probably used manganese as well. Yes. Wow. Manganese gives that little, yeah. I like to play with the blues and bring out they they kind of interact with one another and bring out a different look when you mix certain shades of blue and it creates that magic. I like to do that. Uh, at least I hope I've achieved that in that piece. Can you speak for a moment about the painting of the ocean, how you were saying you weren't feeling well that day and you weren't planning on painting and yet you're so happy with the piece? Can you explore that a little further? There are days we all have when we don't feel like painting. And uh, yes, that particular day, I wasn't feeling well at all. And I really didn't want to paint. And uh, 
typically I end up painting pretty much every day. Um, so that day I decided to just take it out and play and do it for myself. The sea I find is a very healing thing for me. Uh, the colors of the sea, the sound of the sea, the scent of the sea, all of it. And I was just trying to express that in the piece. Um, so if you would like to, to start and then about 10 minutes in, if you're open for questions, we'll start sending questions. Yes. Is that the same, is that the same flower we saw in your slideshow behind you? Yes, uh, you can see, yeah, this is the poinsettia, yes. That's right. Allison, could you stand by the painting so we can get an idea of the size? Yep. Absolutely. It's a half sheet. Wow. That's pretty. Thank you. Uh, well, most welcome. So before we get started, uh, I let me talk about my process a little. And also to explain to you, I'm a leisurely painter and I don't rush. I choose consciously to break away from the whole hurrying mindset that is so popular. So I am slow and I enjoy being slow. So I have started my painting a little ahead of time and I probably won't finish before we finish this live, but uh, I wanted you to get a feel of it, some of it before I start painting as well. So there's this, let me just pull it closer for you to see. And I will proceed from here now. Uh, what I do before I start a painting is I, uh, I make swatches. I go through the swatch cards that are, uh, I have made a whole collection. I use the dot cards. Thank you so much, John, for these. These help me to choose my initial set of colors when I, I could barely get them here. So I had to. So I've made swatch cards of the hues, the orange, the yellow, earth, purples, blues, greens, neutrals. And then I use these as a constant reference. Whenever I'm doing a painting, I try not to stick to the same colors. Of course, I do have my favorites. Opera pink is one of my favorites. I won't deny that. But I try to... Uh, like if I'm using a particular red in one painting, I would try to change it up for the next one. I like to experiment and I've always been that way. So in each painting, I will usually swatch out the colors that I'm going to use. And uh, I, once the painting is done, I usually store these away. Uh, so I can take this out years from now and remember, okay, I like that particular look and what color did I use there? And it's a very useful ready reference for me over the years uh, to keep referring back to my paintings and saying, because sometimes you paint something and then years later you say, oh God, I really like that thing that I did, but I don't remember what I used. So this is handy. And uh, I do this, of course, I try and blend it out and see how they play with one another. This part is very important. Once I'm sure of this, then these are finalized. And once these are finalized, then this goes in my file. And those are the only colors I will use in the painting after that. I won't use anything else. If I choose a certain blue, like the tallow blue, I will not use another blue again. So in that particular painting, only those colors go in. So that's my essential preparatory process. Okay, so let's get started. And... Uh, I've done a little bit here. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to mix colors as I go. What I usually do is wet the space before I start. I think I you will see this in my Monday mixes as well. I've mentioned, I prefer to wet the space. So it gives me a little more time to blend. I like to have a lot of soft blends within the
petal. Yes, and since I don't have great right brain and left brain coordination, I might stop talking in between. You can just remind me if I do. Uh, so there was a question that um, a viewer saw that you had six colors on your swatch card. Is that then a number that you limit yourself to? Is then those six colors? Uh, it's entirely dependent on the painting. Like I said, in this case, it is six colors. Uh, depends on the painting. Like when I showed you the painting that was called Joy, you know, I've played with like a lot of colors. Uh, in that case, it, it, it's entirely on the painting. Okay. Thank you. I don't limit myself. If it's needed, I'm very happy to work with a few colors and that gives you wonderful results as well. Alison. Yes. What is your favorite time, uh, time of year to paint? Favorite time of year? Yeah, your favorite time. Favorite time of the year? Yeah. Is it autumn? Is it summer? Every day. Spring? Every day. Mm -hmm. Are there some colors from each one of those time periods? that oh, okay. uh, you're more interested in? I'm not typically a landscape painter. Like I mentioned, mm -hmm. I prefer to paint from my from subjects that I've seen and which is mostly organic stuff, flowers, fruit, uh, the sea, birds, that kind of thing. So it's largely dependent on the Subject. Mm -hmm. The time of year has nothing to do with it. The, the colors that you're using there are reminding me a lot of uh, spring blossom. Although it may, I mean, I, I'm no botanical person. It could be any time of the year. Mm -hmm. Alison, what paper are you using? I'm using Arches. And do you pre-stretch? Usually, if I'm working on a bigger size, yes. This isn't very big. This is about 9 by 12, so I haven't pre-stretched. Thank you. Chavi has a question. It's how do you choose the color palette for your subject? Hi, Chavi. Nice to see you here. Uh, I choose the color palette based on the subject. I look at the subject and, you know, even if it's a flower, uh, you'll actually find a lot of different colors in a flower that you don't expect to see unless you have an eye for it. So. I try to look at my subjects and see if there's something that is not immediately apparent. And if I can put that in or be creative by adding a that's how I choose my palette. And we had a question on Facebook by Stephen asking about how you're using the sponge and does this ever muddy your colors? Oh. Okay, the sponge is a great way to tap off excess paint from your brush. And uh, um, that way you don't flood your, sub, your painting with a lot of paint at one stretch. Uh, no, it doesn't muddy your color. This is fairly absorbent, so it just goes in. Yes, that's a very good question because sometimes I would expect that it would muddy you. The color, 
And uh, once I'm done, I wash it out and it's good to go again. What I'm trying to do is mix all the colors that I've shown you already and keep working while blending them a little bit at a time. Alison, is your paper cold pressed or is it hot pressed? It's cold pressed. I only work on cold pressed. I like the feel of the paper. If you're on Zoom, you can ask Allison questions directly, if you'd like. Yes, you're welcome to ask. I have a question. Sure. Um, do you find that the quality of the water you're using impacts your color or your painting? What kind of water do you use? We have very heavy water where I live. It has a lot of minerals in it and it seems to make a difference. Uh, in my case, I use tap water. I have heard the discussions on this in the past, but in my case, I use tap water. I'm quite comfortable with it. I don't find any difference. Uh, we do have rather alkaline water, but uh, it seems to work fine. I don't, I don't find, I mean, the paints are phenomenal. I, I hardly have to make much of an effort. Thank you. You're welcome. How do you keep your lines so precise? When I'm painting? Yes. Oh. I think uh, a lot of practice perhaps. Who is that? Sally. Keep your lines so precise. How do you do that? By a lot of practice, I'm guessing. While I'm painting, if my life is place, it's, it's due to a lot of practice. They aren't so perfect. But I try to. It's just largely practice. Alison Harinakshi here. So, uh, are you using other pigments, other different pigments other than the ones that are stated on your palette for these mixes right now? For the dot card? Yeah. Uh, uh, like I mentioned, these are the six colors I'm using New Cambodge. Queen, Queen Deep Gold, Opera Rose, Queen Rose, Carbazol Violet, and Thalo Blue Green Shade. Yeah, but we are seeing uh, many more uh, in your palette right now, so. Yeah, you mean in uh, in my palette? Yes. I'm, I'm just using this, which I'm mixing oh. and creating these colors. All right, okay, thanks. You could actually ask um, <clears throat> Alison later to share the image of her color study and we're going to share it up in our socials in Facebook and Instagram. Yes, absolutely. Alison, are you, are you painting from a reference photo right now or is that from your memory? No, it's a reference photo. Again, something that I've photographed myself. Allison, can you show the reference photo under the camera that's showing your painting? Oh, yeah, actually, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. It's lovely. 
What are the things, uh, other artists that influence your work? Uh, actually, I'm, I draw my inspiration from nature. I, I marvel at what I see and uh, photography has changed my whole perspective towards things. So I largely get my inspiration from nature. There are a, a huge number of botanical artists out there who, whose work I love. Uh, but I try to, and especially the old masters, I mean, there, there's nothing that, I haven't seen botanical masters, too many of them, but I try to paint based on what resonates with me. I'm more into choosing my inspiration from what I see around me. I want to express myself rather than to be, uh, end up uh, imitating something that I see. Of course, you learn by imitation, but at some point you also want to find your originality. That's so good to have actual, um, you know, nature to teach you. Uh, to paint uh, shapes, lines, rhythm. So true, like we see so much of the Fibonacci, uh, the natural elements in life around us. Absolutely. And so many people kind of just check out. So I've noticed in your work that you really, uh, uh, but you don't use the whole photo. So what percentage is kind of intuitive and what percentage is actual photo? Uh, whatever my subject is, I will pick that and put that into my uh, painting. And uh, I try to express at least about 20 to 30% of it from my own expression. So I always try to have a mix of not just the subject itself, but also something that comes from me. It should come from me, something. Otherwise, it's no different from just being realism. And while there's nothing wrong with realism, it takes some incredible mastery to be a realist. But for me, art has to be something that comes from within you. So while I use my subjects wisely, I also try and find ways to put a little bit of me into it. If that That's makes sense. That's a wonderful sense. answer. What do your okay. parents think of you as being an artist? I'm sorry? Uh, what does your family think of you as an artist? Do they encourage you? Okay. Uh, my husband and my daughter are very, very supportive and very encouraging. And I couldn't do much without my husband. He's, he's helped me every step of the way. So yes. That's wonderful. Allison, your abstract was um, very beautiful and the flowers seem to have such structure. As an artist, how do you delineate between the two? When, when do you feel in your soul it's time to do an abstract, which really doesn't have a huge form or function versus doing a, um, a flower or something of nature which has more form? Typically when I do the abstracts, it's for me. Uh, when I'm doing the flowers and other subjects, it's for my studies or for creating a painting for a purpose. But the abstracts are, are like a little bar of candy for myself. Very nice. I've always considered flowers to be one of a very abstract because of all the ins and outs of it. And if you just don't pay attention to what it is, and look what's there, I, see, I find it very abstract. 
Yes, you're, you're absolutely right. It does have a lot of abstraction to it. Alison? Yes. Um, you mentioned that you've got an interest in, in Turner's work. And when I saw the image that uh, you showed in the showcase, mm -hmm. you could see straight away that you understood Turner very well. Thank you. I saw some of his work at one of the exhibits when I visited the US. I don't remember which, I think it was in, in I don't remember which place. We see perhaps one of the museums and I was blown away. It was a little piece, but I, I, I spent hours admiring it. Well, I'm, I'm blessed enough to be able to go and see many of Turner's paintings in, in most towns and cities where I live in England. So, but they're still fascinating to look at. You're certainly very blessed. That's wonderful. Are you able to see the the folds and the glows happening within the petals uh, at this point? Is it what is your special yeah. uh, connection with nature? I, who is that? Yanmin. Yes. Yan, hi. What's Yan. your special, special feeling with nature? And are there also other subjects you like? Well, uh, I steer away from structural paintings. Uh, other than boats and stuff like that, uh, anything marine related. But for the most part, uh, I, I, I think, I, I, I can't put it into words actually, because it's a connect with uh, something so natural. I, I love organic shapes. I love the aspects of nature. Uh -huh. But you translate that connection very well into your paintings. So that's what's wondering me. Thank you. That's very nice of you. I'm very happy to finally see you, Jan. We used to communicate on Facebook, but I've never seen you in person. Alison? Yes? When you put in the veins into uh, the painting, do you ever uh, score into the actual paper to make it run into the paper, the paint? I didn't quite get your question. Uh, some people use a, a scoring technique for the veins of the leaves. Oh. Uh, do, do you ever use that technique at all? Writing into the into the paper to create lines? Yeah. Uh, no, not really. No. Uh, no. So it's all like playing on the surface, draw uh, mm -hmm. paint work. And how long does one of your, I know it's a difficult question, in general, how long does one of your paintings take you? Uh, anywhere from a couple of hours, depending if it's like a seascape or something, it's much faster. Or up to a week, uh, 
I tend to take breaks between. I don't paint continuously. So yeah, up to a week. Allison, Sandra from Facebook is uh, asking, what's the size, brush size um, are you using now for the veins? I was using a size eight from Silver Brush. For, for this part now, the veins, is that size eight? Oh, okay. For the veins, you mean? Yes. Uh, this is a size zero. Thank you. So this is one of my favorite colors, Quin Gold Deep, or Quin Deep Gold rather. I really enjoyed the discussion y'all had yesterday on this. It's one of my solution. Yeah. Um. Is, is it normal for you to actually go directly into uh, the main flower that you're painting uh, in, uh, and not work, do the background before it? Uh, it all depends on uh, what I feel in the moment, but yeah, I think it's relatively uh, yeah, I think it's relatively easier for me to just do the do the subject first and back on later. Just have to be careful with how much wash you put around outer edge. Mm -hmm. Which time do we have? Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do some of the looser work up here uh, because this will take a little more time and I want to show you how I do some of the looser work as well. I'm going to just darken this a little before I go there. Alison, uh, oh, go ahead, Gab. Sanjay is watching, is and it? I was wondering, uh, how far are you from the other DS uh, family that are uh, in India? So Sanjay and Milind uh, stay in Pune, which is three to four hour drive from here. Milind and I usually connect around December when it's my birthday or uh, during Christmas time. We usually do a live at that time. Sanjay joins us sometimes. Uh, we're not too far from one another. That's wonderful. Yeah, it really is wonderful. We're both wonderful people. All three of you have so much fun energy <laughs> and the passion for watercolor. I owe a lot of it to my dear friend, Helen. Yeah. Um, I noticed on one or two of your videos uh, that you sometimes use the watercolor sticks. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you uh, adapt to using those sticks? Oh, uh, adapt? It, yeah, because it, it's different. Uh, well, it's probably the way I'm using them. But I, I'm fairly direct with the mm -hmm. way I use sticks. So they make very big expressions. I find that the sticks give me a lot. I see, like you can see, I'm a very restrained. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, 
I do things within certain boundaries, but with the sticks, what I find is a lot of play, playfulness comes out. Yeah. And that's a lot of fun. So I don't think of it in a comparative term whatsoever. I think of it as something completely different, something for me to have fun with. Yeah, thank you. So Alice, do does your you daughter ever... paint along with you? Sorry? Does your daughter ever join you in painting? Uh, we've done one on Mother's Day together. She, she has a particular type of expression. So I like her to have her freedom to express herself in her own way. And uh, we did uh, a Nicole Kidman painting on Mother's Day as that was a gift to me. So I don't know if any of you have seen it, it's on my Instagram. I will look at it today. It's lovely. It's absolutely beautiful. You did a great job. This Lisa, Julie, by the way. <laughs> Judy, yes. yes. It's really lovely. It's fun that you two can connect over a shared interest in painting, I think, too. Yes. In India, the focus is usually on our education are, uh, what do you call it, Aca academics more than, more than the art. Like, you were talking about. It's called STEM, they, they need to add an A to it, to add art to it. I didn't catch what you said, John. I think here in the States, they call it STEM and they leave the A out of it, which is art. They need to add the A back in so um, young people can learn about art as well. It's been taken out of the curriculum. Exactly, exactly. It's not considered important enough to be in the curriculum, which is sad. sad yeah. And I think that's a really neat gift for you to be able to give your daughter to be able to have that shared interest together when she's not able to get that at school. Alison? Yes. Uh, am, am I right in saying that you use opera pink? Uh, say that again? Am I right in saying that you use opera pink? Yes, 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 absolutely. It's one of my favourite colours. <laughs> it is, it's, a, it's a lovely colour, isn't it? Uh, it's very unique. Yes, yes. Um, and as we pointed out yesterday, uh, a lot of botanical people like that particular colour because it it simulates a lot of uh, the pinks that exist in botanicals. But how, how, how do you deal with the issues with uh, light fast? Is, is there any solution for that from your viewpoint? Yeah, that's what I was telling John. I loved the discussion yesterday on, on the opera pink because that was something that I actually struggled with myself when I was choosing the colors that I would like for my palette. Mm. And uh, 
it was just too beautiful to pass up. But I had to figure out a way because if it was as fugitive as they claim to be. So I found a compromise. One is that the color itself has quinacridone magenta in it. Right. That's uh, giving it a certain sense of balance where uh, it will retain certain amount of value. And then to enhance that, I usually use it like I'm using it now with the Quin Rose. Right. So even if it should down the years fade, uh, it'll not you lose its uh, tonal value. One of the most important things of the painting is the tonal value. So if I can get it to retain its tonal value, I'm good to go. We had a question about what was in your spray bottle. And I have a second question also about color theory. You have a bright pink bougainvillea right in the front. And I was curious, do you strategize color theory of the background to make it pop because uh, and push forward and be visually stimulating? And saw an example of that in some of your other work. And I'm curious, do you strategize the color theory? Uh, I kind of mix the colors ahead of time, like I've shown, I, I, <laughs> hang on. So I try and mix the colors uh, before I get started, uh, whatever I see in the painting. And uh, I'm not sure what you mean by strategize, but uh, Uh, does that answer your question? I'm not sure what you mean. If I can piggyback on that question, Anna, uh, like working with cools and warms, like pushing and pulling, or maybe even values, uh, like uh, a softer uh, background where things are more prominent and crisp and sharp in the front. I think that's what she's talking about. Uh, the difference in edges is definitely something I work with all the time in my work. That's, that's one of the most beautiful things about nature. You see the difference in edges and it keeps you fascinated. But uh, for the color theory, I think she was asking for that I I will pick my colors beforehand. Sometimes I said in a certain flower, you you can see more colors than they're really uh, visible at the first sight. So I try and use. Hi, Alison. Hi, Alison. Here. Oh, Angela sorry. here. Yes, Angela. Oh, sorry. It's somebody else? Oh, uh, sorry I missed the beginning, but uh, I just wanted to say how much I love your paintings, your florals, and all the others. And especially, I follow all your posts on oh. um, Instagram. They are so inspiring. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. <laughs> your colors, your colors are some of the colors I, I chose myself. So we have a lot in common and I love the way you mix the opera and the, the yellow. I don't know if that is quinacridone gold or which one it is, but it gives such a beautiful tone. And you are able to use the same colors for the background and for the foreground, which is just beautiful. I love your work. Thank you very much, Angela. I did hear your discussion yesterday on colors and I, I, I was smiling when you said that 
many of them resonate with you because they're kind of the choices you would make. So that was really nice. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Alison, did you say that there was just, there was tap water in your spray bottle? That's right. Okay, thank you. And there was another question about um, your swatch card that you use to, to choose colors for this particular painting. Is that on the same paper that you're using to do the painting? So is the paper the same on both? Ah, the swatch cards. That's a good question. Uh, no, I use cheaper paper for the swatch cards. Um, those, uh, it's uh, an Indian brand called Anupam, and they are 300% 300 GSM cotton paper. And uh, it's cellulose, no, sorry, it's 300 GSM uh, paper, but it's not cotton, it's cellulose. So it isn't suitable for painting like I do, but it for swatching, it's wonderful. I tell all my students to try it out here. How much time do we have left? Uh, eight, eight, eight to 12 minutes. Okay. Allison, uh, I know you use uh, some iridescence. Do you use iridescence in your uh, flower work? Uh, yes, I have one. I have some of them where I've used insects and there I've used the iridescent with it. So like the, the wings of a bee, you might see one of them on my Instagram. Alison, do you use iridescent you. on the, um, the eyes of one of the paintings that the, the eyes were just gorgeous? Or did you use any iridescent in those eyes? No. Whenever I'm doing eyes, uh, I try to build uh, the values purely from tonal values, not from the iridescence, because uh, then that's very dependent on the angle that the light is following. And not everyone would be able to see it shine that way. Yeah, but I've uh, used uh, this, one of the iridescence is the electric blue, I think. I absolutely adore that. And I've done uh, the Morpho butterfly with it. And I absolutely love that color. So, oh, okay. yeah. Alison, uh, there's a question by Elke. Um, your background and your foreground seem to have the same intensity. How do you make the foreground uh, stand out? Yeah, so I. I haven't finished the work yet. When I finish it, you will see, uh, I don't want it to stand out too much. I want it to be a little bit distinctive. It has gone a little bit dark here today because I'm multitasking. And my, like I said, my right pin don't always dance and sing. Uh, typically, it's not meant to be. I can show you a test. Uh, run that I've done earlier, but uh, and now what I'm going to do is kind of sprinkle a little salt here. Alison, hmm. um, in, in this kind of painting, how important is it for you to leave uh, chunks of paper uh, white? Oh, I, I am leaving a lot of it white. Uh, depends on the subjects. Sometimes 
like Bogan Villa for me is very spontaneous. There's there's something very spontaneous about it. So then, yes, you would like to leave a lot of whites to give it the space to express itself. Mm -hmm. Get what I mean? Yeah, somebody asked what's in my bottle. It's just regular water, regular tap water, not uh, anything else. So if we would like to wind up for now and I will, you can tell me when you would like to stop and I will finish this and then share the finished work with you. Oh, that would be absolutely fantastic. I kind of like the, um, that's the phthalo blue, isn't it? Is that phthalo blue? Yes. So I let it mix on the paper with the yellow. I, I like that so very... much because phthalo is such a very, 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 they're so strong. Yes. And to, to, to see them use is really wonderful to see how you can actually bring that, that strength down. It's very nice. Alison, there's a request from Susan. If you could quickly share once more uh, your reference photo. My reference photo, yes. Yeah. So just to give you an idea of what the finished painting would look like. That's beautiful. So soft and awesome. so pretty. That's from Mrs. Julie. Yes. That's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Yeah. It's nice Me to too. see foundations or a painting going in and taking the time to look at how something builds up into that final image. Yeah. Slow and patient work. Yeah. It's really beautiful, Alison. Thank you. Who is that? Anand. Thank you, Anand. Allison, oh. it's absolutely beautiful right. how you have the soft watercolors in the background and then the realistic flowers in the foreground. I absolutely love it. It's so pretty. Thank you, Buffy. Uh, Alison, this is Christine. Uh, uh, the paper, is it very important? You uh, said in the beginning you're using ash uh, paper. And uh, you showed us some pictures uh, in the beginning and uh, uh, was a paper called Bahong. Yes. What's the difference between these two papers? The Bahong is, uh, yes, it's a China made paper, but uh, in comparison, uh, it's a little bit cheaper than Arches, but it gives me similar results uh, to what I get from arches. Of course, if I'm doing a demonstration or fi finished painting, very often I will go for arches. There's some different charm to arches. Nothing comes up to that. But Bohong is an amazing paper. Even the Academy range, I have done a whole, I think we have these strata challenges. I've done a whole 30 days paintings on those. And I came to absolutely love the Academy range. Then I switched to the artist range later. And they're, they're wonderful paper. But I've used uh, the cold press always, so I am not too familiar with the other two. The Have you ever used paper. Lana? Thank you. Have you ever used Lana paper? Yes. Lana is wonderful. Yeah. I know we've had uh, two great paintings today, of course, Anna's little boy uh, did one for uh, for us, didn't he? It's really special to share your studio with your kids, isn't it, Alison? Yeah. Yes. Got to encourage, you, you know what we said earlier about art being pushed out mm -hmm. of the curriculum? We've got to encourage our kids to be creative. So Allison, if you could share the, the final when you're done with it, that'd be fantastic. Your work is beautiful. It's very, very beautiful. And with that, does anybody have any last questions for Allison? Uh, yes, Allison, do you use masking fluid? Yes, uh, sometimes very minimally. 
because uh, I prefer to, like you've seen, I've just painted around. Mm -hmm. uh, I prefer to do it even when get, uh, you know, the hard edges. Uh, in the C painting that you saw of mine, there I've used masking fluid because I wanted the freedom of expression when I'm throwing paint on. And I wanted to just be able to throw it on. So yes, then the masking fluid really helps with that. But for the most part, I don't use. And uh, also I wanted to share a fun fact for this bougainvillea. It's also known as the paper flower. And it's one of the traditional medicinal plants. It's known to possess anti-cancer, anti-diabetic, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, <laughs> antioxidant properties, and it's also used among tribal people for fertility. <laughs> so it's just a fun thing. Does it all. Thank may you. I, may I ask another question on a different subject? Yes. Can you speak more? You were mentioning earlier about, uh, I read right at the beginning about having a harder day and you painted through it and you're so happy with the painting that you ended up. Uh, can you speak to how we have impediments that make it hard to paint and hard to produce? And I'm also experiencing a lot of these impediments or challenges or things that stop us from painting are actually in our heads, our own fears and our own inhibitions. Would you be willing to speak to that about how do you overcome the challenges of being an artist? Um. <laughs> It's a difficult question, but I think that the key is not taking yourself too seriously. At the heart of it, then. Hi, Milin. Nice to see you. Would you show your swatch card again and the colors on your palette, please? Yeah, that's my swatch card. That's the new gamboge. So you can see the mixes here, the gamboge, the opera pink, the quin rose which I finally use here. And then when I want more orange shades, like somebody was saying, you seem to be using more colors uh, than as shown here, but I am actually just using those six, six colors and look at the range that it makes. So you have oranges, you have the purple, the purple mixes with the queen gold and creates nice neutrals. I have not used a green here. So wherever you see in green, I've mixed my green with the yellow and the yellow. Well, Allison, thank you very much. Thank you everyone for taking your time on Friday. Next week, I look forward to um, greeting you all from, from Italy. So with that, thank you all thank very you. much. Thank, thank you. you, Allison. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Thank Bye. you. Bye.